Hello golfers, welcome back to JD Golf TV, your home for playing better, faster. You may be thinking, what is that guy doing? He has just completely lost his mind, which may not be untrue. However, what I'm going to show you is how your shoulders work in the golf swing. To do so, I've got my K-Vest torso harness on, and I've got a alignment stick through there. I've got another alignment stick through my belt loops. You'll remember that hopefully from the how to use your hips. These sticks are going to really help us and we're going to see a very important relationship between the hip stick and the shoulder stick. So let's get after it. If I stand straight up and down, see, isn't turn such a beautiful thing? Look, I'm just turning. Life is good. Do you see that? Isn't that beautiful? Life is wonderful. I'm just turning. Okay? Fine. Now, in golf, it's not quite that. There's a little bit of this. You see the separation? I'm back. I'm turning the lower body before the upper body. Now, it turns out that that little sequence is a big deal. There's a whole lot of folks that are trying to get to the top of the backswing and turn fast with the whole body. Folks, if you want to slice the poop out of it, that's the move for you. That move, getting up here, holding up your club at the top and unwinding, is for people who already hook the poop out of the golf ball. If that's not you, well, that's not what to do. But let's talk about this you have to get now bent over into the posture to hit a golf ball. That's where everything goes, uh, what is the saying, to hell in a handbasket. Once we bow down and pray for good golf shots, hello ball, now the hip stick, the right side of the stick, turns back around. The right side of the shoulder stick turns around. What's the order? Ah, I would say that it's very much Arms, shoulders, then hips. Okay? Arms, which means club. Arms, shoulders, hips. Do you see a little sequence? That Sometimes that really helps. As you may know from all of our instruction heretofore, you don't want to think about hips and clubs and arms. You want to think this. Club, top stick. Club, top stick, bottom stick. There's a backswing. Club, Stick one, stick two. Sounds Dr. Seussish. Is that a word? Club, top, bottom. The downswing will be bottom, top, club. Club, stick one, stick two. Stick one, actually, and you can get the club moving too. Stick two. It looks like this. Doesn't that look just like golf? Here's the thing. The way the shoulders work has to do with the tilt of the shoulders as much as the turn of the shoulders. So what you don't want to do, folks, is you do not want to restrict this hip turn on the way back and try to turn because I'm not going to get the club back very far. And if I don't turn back enough, I can't get the club around enough to get to the inside. You can see that, I hope, that is plain as day. I got nothing here, and it actually hurts right in there. But if I allow my shoulders stick to stick one, I've blown it already with the stick one, stick two, but you know what I mean. If I get this way and this way, now I can make, hey, look at that. That's a 90-degree shoulder turn in posture. Isn't that something? What a deal. Very cool. If I turn enough, I can get around. So I need to let this go too, and this go. Okay, that's the turn portion, okay? We want to get somewhere close to that stick pointing at the camera on the way back. That'd be a lovely way to go. You don't have to go past that, but you can if you can. But if I have to go, <laughs> I don't, folks, I'm telling you, I have seen it all in 30 some years of this job. I've seen people trying to turn so far that they go like this. Well, well, that's cool if you don't have to hit the ball. Folks, you can't try to turn so far 
that you move over and can't see the ball anymore. Right? Please. So nothing like that. Basically, we're turning, we're turning to about 90 degrees, somewhere around there, between 80 and 90. Okay? Enough to get the grip around. If I don't turn enough, the grip's not around. That's more inside without even moving my arms. Okay? Isn't that cool? So that's big. Okay? That's the turning portion. And there's some turning portion on the downswing. And we know that the lower stick is going first, top stick second. I will kill myself if I try to swing like this. Okay? And we're getting ourselves a little bit open with the torso stick. Okay, shoulder stick, and a little bit opener with the hip stick. That's, that's actual, that's how it goes. That's really how it goes. Pay attention to the sticks. Now, the reason I did this video is to show you that there's a tilt to the stick. So there's a turn, okay, around the clock face. We're going to call that tilt. There's a turn around, forgive me, the stripper pole, right, turning around a vertical axis. That's what we normally think of turn. But there's a turn around the clock face, up and down. That's what we're going to call that tilt. So what happens on the backswing? We're bent over. Now, you would love to think that all I have to do is just turn, and that left side of the shoulder stick will go downward to the ground. And that is almost true. But I know that you've seen, maybe yourself, but certainly your friends, who when they turn back, the left shoulder goes really, really high. You see that? And by the way, this is the big deal about the path of this turn. Once again, I'm going to use the word shoulders, but you're going to cue it with point your stick. This stick. Or this one. Here we go. I can get this stick too high. Now, when I get here, the interesting thing is I can't reach the ground. Number one, if either shoulder is too far from the ground at impact, on the backswing, if either of these shoulders are too high, you have no choice but to find the ball with just your hands and wrists. Okay, One of the great reasons for flipping is you're too far from the ground. So we have to point the left stick down. Now watch this. This is really important. If the hip stick, stick two, stick one, come on, Dunnigan, stick with it. If the hip stick turns back level, guess what? There's no getting the shoulder stick down. I can't even move it. Now you might be more flexible than me. Actually, there are bricks with more flexibility than me. But I need you to know that this stick, getting the right side up on the backswing, is absolutely critical to get the left side of the stick down on stick one. Okay, so you've got to tilt this stick up during the backswing rotation so that you can point this one down. That's really important. Watch this. No hip tilt. It raises up. Do you see that? Folks, I hope that is super clear because it happens wrong in so many golf swings. This is the kind of motion, a big motion error, right? A, a gross motor movement that it's not unlike holding the golf club in a dysfunctional manner. You are going to be in trouble. Okay, let's go again. So to get stick one down, Stick two goes up. Right side of the stick up, and you could just practice these separately. That would be just fine. But you're going to have to get them both eventually. There's the right side up. And it's okay if my right leg straightens up a bit. That is part of how the stick gets up. It's okay if my left leg actually increases the bend. Not enough to go this way with it. Oh, God. All right? Not enough to go this way either. So you wouldn't want to sway toward the target because you're overdoing this leg's work. You'd want to just, in a, making yourself very centered, there goes, I, all I'm doing, I, I, you know, it's okay. Well, you know by now. I feel a little balloon picking this side of my belt up. 
Okay, I'm not even thinking of the stick tilting. I just feel this balloon tilting it up. So I'm back. There goes the tilt of the stick. And the turn. There we go. On the downswing. Okay, you'll remember this lower stick goes toward the target first. But the shoulders don't move yet. This is huge. Look at I know what you're hearing. Well, you're hearing this unwinding motion. It doesn't quite work like that. Well, there's unwinding, but it's different. It really is the downshift that you know about. Notice the stick, the, the hip stick, stick two, went down toward the target, but the shoulders didn't go anywhere yet. I can have this going on. You'll see that in Rory McIlroy. There's some pushing the club actually upward and back toward that wall and actually behind me toward my golf bags over there. There's some of that going on at the same time this way. And then the torso really kicks in. Okay? Uh, getting that straight is really, really important. If you're getting older, you're probably better off with just this sort of swing where from the downswing you've got your tilts in both cases where you just shift and swing and actually jump. If you're getting older, that's a whole lot easier than rotation. But that's another discussion for another time. Go back to work here, Dunnigan. Okay. Now, as I go back, so we got stick one up, stick two down. There's the forward. Now, stick one, the shoulder one, is going to get, I'm going to try to touch the sticks almost. Okay? And that is getting me closer to the golf ball. So I've got this golf ball. If my shoulder's too high, I have to, I, my brain is not going to let me miss this golf ball more than once. So I'm going to start fishing for it. Casting. Get it? Instead, from here, we're back. There's the tilts. There's the shift. Now watch this. Because, uh-oh, the left side's going up now. The right, the left side of the stick and the stick two is going up. Hip stick. So that allows, again, just like in the bashing condition, the right side of the stick to go down. Yes. There we go. I've got the two tilts. Down. Here goes the right side into the left. Now, here's the thing. If I try to get that right shoulder nice and low like a tour player, just like on the backswing, if I try to get this shoulder down and I don't, and boy, man, that locks me up like nobody's business in the back. The fact is, it's not really just compressing the right side that they're doing. I know you're going to hear that too. That is not true. What it is, is the left side of the stick goes up. It tilts the pelvis this way, as you can see in the stick, and that automatically tilts the rest of the spine where the cuts are connected. There we go. Okay? All right. Folks, I can't do this any speed because I will get caught on the stick back here. So you, I know you'd love to see it, wise guys. Here we go. All right. So it's like this. That really is what it looks like. And if I do that properly with both sticks, guess what happens? I can stay in my posture. I don't early extend. I use my feet better because guess what? You know what's picking this stick up over here? It's the push up of my front leg. But I don't have to think about pushing up my front leg. My brain knows to get the stick up it's going to recruit whatever muscles it can that my body can handle to do such a thing. Okay? And this is, again, the external focus business. Okay. Whew. Shoulders tilt. Yes, there is some side bending going on. Wow. With the stick, the stick, two go, the stick one going down, man, that's a bunch. Right? So when you're looking at, when you're looking at, correcting your shoulder turn or your hip turn think with the sticks or use the balloon that i don't know why did you ever see the movie up 
if you haven't seen Up, you don't get it. But imagine it. Here we go. What are we doing again? All right, we're going to tilt the shoulder a little. All right, stick one. Stick two down. Stick two to the target. Then stick two's going up and stick one's going down. That's it, baby. That's it. You know, the funny thing is, even with a bad back, that does not bother me at all. That's really wild. And I think this is your, I guess I could loosely say this is just more safe back mechanics. I'll put a little bit of emotion to it, just a little bit without killing myself, folks. All right, Johnny, behave yourself. That doesn't bother me at all. And if you look at it, from the overhead view, did I get turned? Oh, I did. Isn't that cool? You can see there that the torso stick, the shoulder stick, actually ended up passing the hip stick, too. There's a lot of good stuff going on there. So let's just have a quick review. A lovely posture for the old guy. And here we go. You can't see the sticks right now. And that's okay. So we're going to use this top-down view on the right-hand side. You will see the shoulder go. A little combo deal. You can see the shoulders out racing the, the hip one. There you go. So stick one, stick two. Okay, I guess we could really call, if you really want to be cool about it, the golf club is stick one. Okay, then the shoulder stick, then the hip stick. Now, from this view on the other side, we can see that the right side of the hip stick is way up. We can see that the left side of the shoulder stick is down. This straight, allowing the right leg to straighten up somewhat elevates that right hip, which allows me to stay more bent over. I can get that left shoulder down, okay? Now, this is not a full back because I told you I was going to kill myself, so it never got deep enough. This is going to look like an over-the-top, but I would turn more in a real swing. But, folks, listen, you want me to keep making these videos. I can't kill myself for you. Okay, now, in the downswing, we might see ooh, a little combo deal done again. You can see the hip stick is definitely getting away from the shoulder stick. Shoulder stick's a little bit early. But now you can see a giant differential open up. You see that? This space, we would call this in the world of golf, we would call this space between here and here the differential, right? And then there's going to be some stretch in between the core muscles, okay, and maybe a little snap back, okay, a stretch and then shorten cycle. There we go. All right, now, you can see that club's come down quite a bit, doesn't it? There's some early arm swing going on there too, folks. I don't care what anybody says. Watch Rory McIlroy hit it. You, you, can't, you, you can't miss it. Okay, giant differential now. Look at the difference between these two guys. All right, now, Dunnigan. Get moving the other way. Ooh. Now he's starting to close. They call this closing the gap. Okay, so it's got a lot less. I'm not quite, quite, I'd rather have myself a little bit more facing toward the target. I wouldn't mind having this stick a little more open at impact, but again, no speed. What are you going to do? From this view, Jeepers Creepers, look at the posture the guy's in. Is that unbelievable? The funny thing is, I don't have to ever think about posture if I control my tilts in both stick one and stick two. And now the torso is going to go right past the hips. And that really is how it goes. Okay, so that takes care of the turn and the tilt. Okay, I know that was a little complex, but it is how it works. Working on your tilts this way and this way with the stick is, I'm promising you, 300 times easier than trying to pay attention to what your actual hips themselves are doing, okay? So you've got your hip tilt and your shoulder tilt. Try it yourself. Try going this way and just tilt the shoulder down. That's cool, okay? 
I can feel my spine curving. Now, get the right side up. Hey, look at that. Look at that. It's so much easier. So understand, shoulder motion, very important. Okay? Understand, shoulders too far, because this we call this a flat turn. Shoulders too far from the golf ball, you are in trouble. Okay? A lot of people, as you'll remember, they turn back this way, really flat shoulder turn, because they're trying to make a bigger turn, so they stand up out of it. Okay? They have no hip tilt, which no matter what is going to stand them up out of it. Then the brain goes, hey, dude, you can't see the golf ball. Let's find the ball. And then they go this way to get back down because it's the direct route to the ball. Let's eliminate these things. It is, at least in the Northeast, it is winter. So let's eliminate these things over the winter so we are ready for action by the time spring hits. All right, get after it, folks.